Hey everybody, how you doing? I have launched what has turned out to be a debate regarding strong mayor in Oakland and my contention that it produces an unstable Oakland government that has become largely devoid of institutional memory. And my assertion has been that if you take a look back at the tenure that city managers and city administrators have held, you'll find that the rate has decreased over the years and it's at its absolute all-time lowest under Oakland Mayor Libby Schaff. Strong mayor, you would say, what's the difference between what we have and what we had? We had something called a council manager form of government. What that means is basically that the city manager is hired by the city council and fired by the city council. It takes five votes. We had a modified form of council manager form of government to give the mayor even more power but that didn't quite work even the way the city wanted it to because there was a clamoring call that the mayor should have basically, if you will, ultimate power over the city. So L. Hugh Harris tried to get his version of strong mayor through, but the Hills people, the White Hills people in Oakland didn't want him to have it. And that's the way the election broke down. You say what you want to, but the numbers show it. And so when Jerry Brown ran for mayor in 1998, and got elected in 99, he tried his own version called Measure Z. And Measure Z passed, so Jerry got the strong mayor power that Ellie Hewitt basically coveted. And, and what Jerry did with that sets the tone for where we are today. But the question is, where were we before then? And I, to answer that question, I put together a list. And basically before Jerry Brown and Measure X, Lionel Wilson was a three-term mayor, he had basically an average of six years per city manager. He had David Self uh, and then Henry Gardner. And David Self was 79 to 81, and then Henry Gardner was 81 in 1993. He is still the longest tenured city manager or city administrator Oakland has had. And he's now running the Oakland Alameda County Coliseum Joint, uh, Joint Powers Authority in the Oakland Alameda County Coliseum. And then came Elihu Harris, who we went to become a two-term mayor of Oakland uh, because of the um, basically stop from running again after Jerry Brown, well, Elihu decided not to run for another term is what happened. Uh, and then of course, Jerry Brown's win along with Measure Z kind of cemented that and created the inability to run for a third term for any mayor. Uh, but under Elihu Harris, the rate was basically two years per city manager he had Henry Gardner from 1992 to 93. Then Craig Kosian stepped in to take his place uh, after being a long-time long -time assistant city manager, and that was 1993 to 1997. And then Kofi Bonner was the interim, who I, my classmate uh, at Cal, was the interim city manager in 1997. And then Robert Bob came in in 97 and stuck around through L. Hughes' term and then the Jerry's to 2002. Under Jerry Brown, the rate was four years per city administrator. Robert Bob, until he fired Robert Bob until in 2002 because Robert tried to get a downtown baseball stadium done for the athletics, but Jerry stopped him. Uh, then De Deborah Edgerly took Mr. Bob's place from 2002 to 2008, basically overlapping Brown and then going into the tenure of the late great Ron Dellums when he was mayor after being being our longtime council uh, congressman, excuse me, and Deborah last Ms. Ed, Ms. E as we call her at lasted from 2006 to 2008, and then her place was taken by Dan Linheim, who lasted from 2008 to 2011. Then under Gene Kwan in ranked choice voting, that was our first application of ranked choice voting in 2010. The rate was 1.3 years. We went from two years for city manager. Uh, for city administrator from Delms had one term. Quan had one term, but the rate actually decreased to 1.3 years per city administrator. We, we changed the name. Uh, we had P. Lamont Ewell as the interim for 2011. Then Tiana Santana was brought in to be the city administrator from 2011 to 2014. And I think you did a great job, actually. And then Fred Blackwell took over for her because she resigned uh, and filled in in 2014. But basically, he went to be the CEO of the San Francisco Foundation and also basically realized that Gene wasn't gonna be reelected. 
Uh, then came Oakland Mayor Libby Schaff in 2014, and under Mayor Schaff, the rate is just a hair below, hair above, excuse me, Mayor Kwan's, but Libby has two terms. Her rate is 1.4 years per city administrator. In other words, average out the city administrator lasts for 1.4 years. Uh, that includes, it started with Henry Gardner, then John Flores filled in as interim, then Claudia Capio was interim, then Sabrina Landry was hired, then Stephen Falk, and now Ed Reiskin. And I may have left out a name or two, but I went back over this again and again and again, and I you know, can't see who I left out. I thought maybe Lamont again, I'm gonna re-research that Lamont, Lamont came in. If he, if he did come in, that rate would then be the lowest in history. It would actually be lower than Jean Kwan's even with her one term. But the point is that the, with all, without the council to rubber stamp whether or not an administrator leaves, you get this revolving door that's occurred under Mayor Schaff. And more important, and where I disagree with Lynn Raphael about this powerfully, is Lynn made a, wrote a comment on social media that said, well, I overheard staff members saying, well, we out, we are gonna last longer than they are. Well, so what, okay? You want somebody in there that has continuity. And they're right. And generally staff members have made those comments in response to this, you know, basic fear that the city elected leaders are gonna make the wrong decision about something because they're not trained public professionals. And so with this call to allow what I call mob rule, what you're getting rid of, Lynn, is you're getting rid of people who've taken time to go to grad school, get their MPAs and their master's city planning uh, degrees and other degrees that are associated with running government in a, in a, in a way that is uh, points to the understanding of the operation of government as a managerial science, and you're just leaving it to the whims of the electorate. And then someone says, well, that's democracy. You know what, that's not gonna get us democracy. What it's gonna get us is a, basically a move toward authoritarianism. I mean, I can argue that a number of third world countries have the same kind of process that you seem to want. In other words, you want a person in charge and they can be the dictator. Because it's okay as long as he's, he's, he or she is your dictator. But then you don't want to have a staff that's in the back that is basically the gatekeeper of how things are supposed to be done. So that there's no malfeasance and so that, I think more important than malfeasance or anything like that, even more important than that, is that we have an understanding of how to, for example, do tax increment financing like we did in the past, how to do economic development, a standard that we set when we were regarded as the most fiscally innovative city in the United States during Henry Gardner's tenure, all right? So, and also beyond with Craig Koshin to you know give Craig his props. So we've lost that and what I become, what I'm more bothered by is that we have a city council that doesn't respect it now and we have a mayor that seems to have forgotten it even though she should remember and we have an electorate that wasn't really here or really cognizant of it then and now they are electors and they say, hey, we want to basically act like we have, you know, torches in our uh, fists walking down and doing these protests every time we don't like something as opposed to understanding the legal issues around something, how to change the law. In other words, a professional approach to the resolution of any problem. We're lacking that and it shows. Look at the way the city looks. Alberto Roca, union representative who used to come and visit me and talk about issues regarding the Latino union and industrial change at the time when I was representing L.U. Harris, always said this to me, Zinni, if you like what you're getting, keep on doing what you're doing. My question to you is this, if you look at the city of Oakland and how it looks, do you like what you're getting? And if you don't, why do you wanna keep on doing what you're doing? Subscribe to Zenny62 and bookmark oakandnewsnow.com.